Get up to two months of free podcasting service with Libsyn. Check out the show notes for your promo code to get started podcasting today. Hello, this is Tom Brevoort. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. Welcome back, Looney listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 285, and you are with your two high priests of Conchu, uh, Rebecca. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hi. Um, I feel like I'm, uh, it feels like a weird week without uh, Moon Knight TV show. It's a very strange feeling, isn't it? It's uh, we're, we're right back into it, into the comics. I, I mean, it's like as so if that's... it's never happened, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Except uh-huh. I saw a goldfish in a bowl today, and I went, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's strange. It was such a whirlwind, like six week. April was uh, a magical time. Yeah. Um, but anyway, loonies, thank you for joining us. You're you're with both, as you saw, uh, if you have the video, Rebecca and myself, both high priests of Conchu, and we're here to give you the goods on a moonshine now tonight is a of course a moonshine is a new book review and what we'll be doing is moon Knight black white and blood issue one uh this is live streamed sorry hence if you do have access to you know social medias you can see us chatting away there or you may be just listening to us now on the podcast which will drop very shortly after this live stream uh, a big thank you to our patronies of course uh thank you so much Everyone, uh, for yeah, it's it's crazy. I, I know I say it every week, but really do mean it. And especially with what we've just experienced with the TV show, uh, you know, and we've got new comics up ahead. It's just really, re- we're really grateful that you're you're yeah. a part of it. Um, so thank you. Uh, can't be said. Thanks cannot be said enough. Uh, also, as well, our principal sponsors: Drew Tombs, Daniel Doing, and Frank the Think Tank, uh, as well as CLZ Comics and Dreamland Comics from Schoenberg, Illinois. Um, so yeah, Rebecca, we're we're here uh, to to give to to try and get into comic book reviewing again. Uh, I know, I know. It feels like we have to read and like have thoughts and yeah, yeah. Uh, a big a big good morning to Russell as well. Howdy doody. Yeah, uh, is he's up he's up uh, listening as I know, well. Early, uh, early. I, I think we've got some Russell feedback as well. And uh, oh, I just want to yay, hi Connor. Oh, Connor. <laughs> There he is. Oh, last uh, Connor L all the way from Krypton. Uh, yep. There he is. He's <laughs> saying hello as well. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we've got we've got so many things to to, to cover. Um, I want to also say that we do have some feedback. We've got some voicemail. Uh, we've got voicemail from Noel and and all the loony feedback on Facebook. We'll try to get through all of it. Uh, um, as well as we've got an email, Rebecca, which I forgot to read out and i'd love to because i always love people sending emails yeah no uh, definitely definitely yeah and this was for someone uh, who i'd never heard before from before uh and they were just talking about i think episode five of the moon Knight tv show oh, cool. so yeah i'd love to read read that one yeah. out anyway um but yeah i mean rebecca um how are you <laughs> i'm good i'm good uh mid work so a little bit you know mid-work. uh on edge but tired yeah. but good but good Oh, excellent! You? You're good. Good, good. Always I'm good. good. All, Powered by good. Moon Knight. That's us. Powered by the moon, by the the thing that the light in the sky, or whatever. I don't know what I'm saying, but yeah, exactly, <laughs> Rebecca. <laughs> this is the quality quality you can expect this episode. This, <laughs> exactly, exactly, loonies. You, you know, <laughs> you're in for one. Uh, but Rebecca, let's um, let's get into it. The the moonshine review. remembered it this time yeah it's great i forgot it last time (laughs) Uh, and also uh, got to say rebecca as well i forgot um, a little announcement i mean you obviously know as well Uh, so loonies um i have been trying to pull together some of the creative talent that are doing uh, stories on black white and blood so what we'll have uh hopefully i'm aiming after the release of issue three 
uh, we'll have an anthology of our own, Rebecca. So we'll have um, yeah, yeah, some some short vignette kind of style chats with some of the creators. Um, so that's exciting. Very exciting. Um, well done, Ray. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm still <laughs> trying to get trying to get more names out there, but I got a couple of really good ones as well. So, uh, yeah, so keep an eye out for that, Loonies. Uh, that will uh, supplement, not supplement, complement um, our reviews of the issues, and that will be out after issue three if all goes well. Uh, but Rebecca, we are here for issue one. Yeah, uh, released May eleventh, twenty twenty two. And three stories, of course, being an anthology, Anubis Rex. Uh, so we've got writers, uh, Jonathan Hickman, uh, penciler Chris Bacello, uh, and he does the inks and colours. Uh, Corey Petit does the lettering and editors, Martin Biro, Annalise Bisa, and Tom Bravort. Uh, Rebecca, have you got the details for the second one? <laughs> yeah, the second one. <laughs> I apologise for any pronunciation uh, okay. problems. Uh, the second one is called So White Yet So Dark. Mm -hmm. um, written by Murewa Ayadeli, penciler Dota Nakanda, and also inked and coloured it. Uh, letterer mm -hmm. Corey Petit, uh, which is throughout, actually, and the same mm -hmm. editors throughout as well, Martin Biro, Annalisa Bisa, Annalisa yep. Bisa, and Tom Braybrook. See, I can't even pronounce Annalise. So, you know, I'm like... <laughs> yeah. um, and finally, the third uh, is called The End, writer Mark Guggenheim. Uh, penciler, uh, Jorge Fornes. Jorge Fornes. Um, and he also does the inks and colours as well with all the, the same letters. And, all and I that. think what's really interesting is that one of the notes I put is uh, when mm. in the credits in the actual comic, um, it gives the writers and the artists it just calls them storytellers which i honestly think is okay. how comics should go yeah like, you know like because you know there's all yes, the, the absolutely. Um, absolutely writers versus artist argument and i think this is just uh -huh. the most elegant way of of getting over that they are both telling the story together yeah and i i really like like when i f turned that first page and went oh storytellers yeah and that's really yeah. nice i hope i hope we see more of that in uh in comics generally uh, that's well picked, and um, yeah, I, I agree with you as well, uh, totally. Uh, also, as well, we've got the covers, the, the main cover, Bill Tinkevich. Uh, some of you may know his work, uh, as well as <laughs> small starting out little artist, <laughs> as well as uh, variants by again Chris Bacello, uh, Gabriel Del, to uh, Del Otto, uh, Miko Suyan, Jeff Decal, uh, and Sakai. Sorry, I don't know. Stan Sakai. Stan Sakai as yeah. well. And I've actually, look at this, loony listeners. This is where all the money's going. Um, there we go. I've got <laughs> I've got the vi the visuals for you as well. So as I said, that's, that's really a cool. Yes, and the Ke Sinkevich one. Have you got your floppy already, uh, Rebecca? Or? No, it's in the mail. Yeah, mine too as well. I think I've, I've asked the um, LCS just to get the, because they have incentive ones and, you know, the ratioed ones, which yeah. I've got no chance of getting. But uh, all the ones that are regular, um, I've asked. So I think it's uh, the Sienkiewicz one and the Chris Pacello one as well is um, is readily available. And that one there Ooh, is, nice. yeah, the Delotto. So there are a couple of these. So I did say ten variants, and then you have the uh, the the Virgin cover. Mm -hmm. Then we have the other Miko Suyan, one of my favourite. Um, you know, he's a great artist, yeah. fellow fellow Filipino. Yeah, <laughs> love him. Uh, and then I think, yep, he's got the the variant uh, Virgin cover as well. Uh, and then we have Jeff Jeff Decal. Decal. Yeah, yeah, that looks really cool. I think that is an incentive one. Yeah. So, you know, if you you know your LCS owners, they could probably put one aside for you. Uh, and then I think that one that rounds Stan out. Sakai, yeah, Stan Sakai, yeah, as well. So that's um, they all. Oh, and then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one which I, yeah, I don't have the, <laughs> the name to, uh, a mystery one, and their Virgin cover as virgin well. So, yeah. mm. uh, Petrini's, if you become a member, you know, I'll go the next step and and get all the information for you. So, <laughs> 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 just, just saying, we're nearly there. Uh, I think I no. just went with the uh, Sinkevich. I I I haven't multi bought because um yeah. You know, uh, all the other black, white, and bloods have come out with treasury editions. So the treasury edition for this one, yeah. I think, is due out in September. I'm guessing it might be bumped because this first issue was bumped. I, I don't know how that will affect mm. things. 
But um, I assume the Treasury Editions include all the variants. If they don't, that's that was my gamble. So um, I have pre-ordered that. So nice. Yeah, I'm, the Treasury Editions, I, I'm totally up for as well. I, yeah, I think I think I'm getting that one, and I think I'm getting the Bacello one. But we'll we'll see. Um, Usagi Yojimbo, is that is that one of the artists? Sakai is is he? Uh, is that? Is, yeah, yeah, is that yeah. Connected? Okay. Dan Sakai right. did a Yusagi Ajimba. Yeah, he's uh, very famously Ray. <laughs> very oh, okay. Famously Ray. <laughs> May walk by me in the street, I'd become. <laughs> ooh, wouldn't, wouldn't, but no, he, he may like his anonymity, so I I give him all the anonymity ah. he wants. <laughs> um, Robert Ferrer as well. Good morning. Yeah, morning. Good Buffalo. My gosh, my thank you, Robert, and yes, thank you so I can much. Say, Robert can say good morning, I can say yes. good afternoon, and you can say good evening, I can, and, I can say and good all evening. are true at the same time. Robert, uh, you, Rebecca, and myself, we're all in different points all over the world. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Uh, but thank you, Robert. I, I, I remember chatting with Robert ages ago um, and, yeah, having a good time with, with Robert there. It's good to hear, hear you again, Robert. Uh, and we've got one here from Mario. He was just here last, uh, sorry, Digicom. I'm going to call you Digicom from now on. One of the longest running indies so, by a single creator. Yeah, uh, like Jimbo with back to so. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Yes, okay. I've, I've really got. We're all here I've, to shame, right? I've really, I've already, <laughs> already got egg on my face. I know you, Usagi Yojimbo. Like I know of it, but I don't know the characters. It's on Netflix like at the moment as Samurai Rabbit. So. Oh, okay. Awesome. No, I mean, I. Yeah, I've heard really good things about it. <laughs> 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 and, uh, anyway, um, all that aside and my ignorance aside, uh, Rebecca, so this is obviously available on floppy format and on digital and soon to be the Treasury edition, which is yeah. pretty cool. Um, how how many issues do you reckon they'll get will get for the black, white, and bloods, Rebecca? Uh aren't there four? Three? Are there just four? four? Okay, yeah. I don't know if they're like five or six. Okay. No, yeah. no, no. It's 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 either three or four, I think. Uh, somebody will answer us in the chat. Like we've got a few waffles. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so we got uh, Usagi Jimbo is basically historical samurai comic. Uh, we're talking, and yes, yeah, I, I, very uh, dare I say iconic. I know the the rabbit in the blue um, garb, uh, and then often crosses over with a certain group of. Oh yeah, cool, right, excellent, Ninja Turtles, fantastic. Uh, all right, Rebecca, let's let's get into it because we've got some feedback as well. So I yeah, don't want yeah, to um... get through it all. So I do have a bare bones. It's a bit of a strange one because they're so short, these stories. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um would you mind reading it, Rebecca? Is, is that Not okay? At all. So we'll do quick summaries of each of them. Uh, in Anubis Rex, uh, a Moon Knight of the Future accompanies a small girl battling an ancient deity aboard their satellite station. Uh, in So White Yet So Dark, Moon Knight teams up with Spider-Man to catch some thieves intent on unleashing hell with the possession of some stolen Egyptian artifacts. And finally, in the end, Moon Knight escorts a witness in danger to the courthouse with vicious assassins in tow. Yeah, so I think it's fair to say, Rebecca, that like the pre premise of premise, premise, premises, the, <laughs> the premises, the premises. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. I thought it was like analysis. I, thought it was like, oh, I just analysis. want to apologise to everyone listening to this today. <laughs> we are on a different planet. Yeah, no, this is what happens when you you shift gears from TV show to back to comics. It's yeah, a bit, yeah. <laughs> um, I was thinking analyses, synopses, premise, premises, no, premises. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is that uh, it's they're all really simple, right? You've only got 10 pages or so to get yeah. your thing across. Um, so what, I, need, I know, actually, this is a good question, Rebecca. What What do you hope to get from, like, these short stories? What, for you, would make a good story? Like it's not the um, plot because the plot is always going to be simple, right? So the plot has to be simple, or um, it's a, simple but not simplistic. Like you can you can get into sort of various different things that you can jump straight into something and do something quite deep if you want to. Like I mean, we could have just like one of them could just be like a therapy session with Mark, or uh, I assume Dan Slot's doing one, right? 
I think that's yes, what they want. Yes. Yeah. I, so we could we could get a very uh, a sort of <laughs> one based around a Jewish holiday or something like that. Mm. I mean, I think it, it gives um, a wide range of creators who might not get the chance to write this uh, Moon Knight because you know there's a limited number of Moon Knight runs and. Yep. Um, so only a few people have had that real chance to dig in on him to just sort of play around in his toolbox um, and I, I think this first one is kind of weird because they're so different um, like I don't know what I'm expecting I guess like uh, to, I, I guess this one has now changed my expectations for the rest is that we'll just get these interesting little glimpses into people's heads and art and you know some of them we might want to see more of some of them might be fine never seeing again but it's all just people throwing ideas at it it's almost like as if we were sitting around in a pub going like what would you do if you had like uh, you know yeah. one scene of moon knight um in a tv show or something like that because you know 10 pages is nothing really but yeah. it, but uh, you know like these three stories i think show actually kind of the things you can do with it and I've not read any of the other Black, White and Bloods. Um, I read a bit of Superman, Red, White and Blue. Is it Red, White and Blue? Yeah. Uh, yeah red and Blue. Oh, red and, red blue. and Blue. Red, Blue. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's the same kind of thing. Like you're, you're sort of, it's like you're on a boat and you're like veering one way to another from like either something sort of slightly comedic, something very heartfelt, something very earnest. To, in Moon Knight's instance, we'll have something a bit more violent, something a bit more grounded. You know, I mean, look at this one. We've gone like way into the future mm. and then too much more street level ones. And um, I think it's interesting because like to make a Moon Knight run work, um, I think we'd all say you need a certain amount of things. The, the Jeff Lemire one aside, because that was so different mm -hmm. um, in terms of like the structure of it and, and where it went. And this is like telling, it's sort of freeing creators from that and saying you don't have to do one that can sustain even six issues just go in yeah. there what do you fancy doing um it's interesting it's, it's never been a character that i thought would get this treatment so Ooh. never really considered it before so um it, yeah it, it, i think that is some of the reason we're sort of struggling talking about it a bit is we're a little bit unsettled by seeing moon knight in some of these uh and, and in such short stories so yeah, look, I'd imagine it would be um, a different sort of challenge for writers uh, and, and the the pencils, the artists as well, to to capture something in such a short time. We saw in Marvel Comics Presents, oh, I'm going to say it's issue four, I can't remember, the Benjamin but, Percy one, yeah. which was, uh, I mean, that was, I thought was done really well. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, Ibrahim. Oh, um, Mustafa, was it Ibrahim yes, Mustafa? Yes, yeah. Mustafa, yeah. Great artwork. Um but what I, I guess what I am hoping to see in these stories, what I was hoping to see um, and what I have seen in some of the stories is that it has a hook, I guess, because, you know, we're not going to be, we're not going to be kind of diving deep into the details of the plot or the character development because there just simply isn't enough time for that to be kind of nurtured. Yeah. So there's got to be something kind of that grabs you, I think. And I had this, like, I had this, uh <laughs> rant i i sent to russell and russell you're if you're still listening you'll know very much what i'm talking about uh, russell does uh gamma charge it's a hulk podcast yeah and i was just telling him my you know my unhappiness with the the current kate's run <laughs> because mm -hmm. uh, i just think i can't really latch onto it there are a lot of ideas there are a lot of like hooks on there but i think they're like drawn out or or they're just like blotched in there amongst a long a long story I think hooks can work a lot better in in these anthology, these short yeah. stories, because that's what you'll identify potentially the most. And yeah. if it's a good idea, and and I don't mean it being like a gimmick, like I don't know, Moon Knight dressed in pink or whatever. Um, Let's do it. <laughs> but you know, if it's an idea, like just like an observational thing that you kind of go, oh yeah, that would that is I have thought about that like from yeah. time to time. That sort of stuff, I think, would be really good. Um, and yes, <laughs> I was I was a little unhappy there um, with Russell. Uh, just you know, I don't know. Just had to had to tell someone. We're not Russell. with Russell. No, no, not with Russell. No, I was I was I was un, I was, un, I was unhappy. <laughs> I'm the worst. I'm sorry. No, you, I'm you're sorry. right. Um, but you know, Russell just had to 
you know, take the assault. <laughs> I'll pretend again, that sounds really bad, but um, we know what you my mean. verbal we know what assault. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I just want to give props to Terence here as well. What was that sound after Rebecca mentioned the I Future don't know. Midnight? Oh, Terence, what are you? What are you hearing? We'll have to Maybe... listen to it back. Um... Wow, I don't know. Um, yes. Anyway, we should really get into it. Yep. Now, so three different stories. Rebecca, we can bounce around, I guess. We don't have to go through things systematically unless you want to. No, no, no. 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 Um, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> um, what, I guess, what would you like to identify first uh, or, or chat about first? Um, I think we're going to get into some of the, I, I, having pre-read some of the comments, I think they'll trigger some of the other stuff we should talk about, about this anthology. Uh, should uh-huh. we start with the end? Okay. Shall we be like the end? <laughs> yeah, let's start be like the end. end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, mm-hmm. because, yeah, so, what did you... yeah. so that one was playing around with story structure. Yes. Um, as so well cool. as giving us the story. Like, and and it was I guess that was the hook. What if we told it that way? Um I'm not sure it needed to be told backwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it added anything to it. I, I did like the Kierkegaard. Was it Kierkegaard's quote? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So that that framed why it was done. And maybe it's a quote that Guggenheim like has thought about a while and wanted to like explore that in kind of comic form. I think I think Fauna's does such good art. I love he does it. really. I was just looking at it now. Yeah, it's the so art is. So clean and. Uh... It, it really works with the black and white and, and red. It really kind of does. Theme, yeah. doesn't it? Um, it, it uses and I read a lot it, I reread it this yeah. I reread it this morning backwards and it did, yeah. reads very well. <laughs> it does. It does read really well backwards. I I just couldn't hack it. I just read it. <laughs> when I found out what was going on, I just decided to read it backwards. Um did you did you find any did you find the effect of reading it like normally, hence the story backwards? Did you find that have any different impact or was it just more confusing? I found it a little bit confusing. I felt like I couldn't connect with it as much forwards yeah. like i could see yeah. what they were doing but i didn't it didn't it just seemed like a shtick and it was fine um yeah. but reading it backwards i just enjoyed it even though it's like a pretty much a nothing story but yeah. um it loses the hook day, yeah. day in the life of mr knight but yeah. um but it did make some of the stuff make more sense like when he changes the costume and i love that it started um uh pretty much in jed's run like with the welcome to the midnight mission my yes. name is tonight how can i help let me go so back that's like here. something we've seen again and again in the current run so that was like nice because mm-hmm. when if you re- that one that one felt very connected to the current run yes yeah it's um I, I just felt like as you when i read it backwards you know so the right yeah. way that the story is told uh, it was good it was it was solid but then it just exactly as you say it was just a straightforward story and again we're talking about like with plots that having to be very simple because you've only got so much like paper space to do so the hook for me uh for me just didn't work about going backwards like just it, it, it didn't it didn't mass but oh my god i love the art and the use of the color yeah um yeah the, the, the sound art effects were amazing comes. as well mm, yeah and the car flips and that one that you just on there Oh um, yes, where it's like the screech down the the thing. Oh, sorry. I... Yeah, <laughs> stop that doing one. that. Stop oh, that, that one. one. There we go. That one. There. That one. Yeah, uh, very cool. It is very yeah. good, isn't it? Um, we get Red Blade it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I was worried. Her... When, see, when I was reading it forwards, I was like worried that that was Iron Man. <laughs> Oh, okay. And I was like, I don't want to be a baddie. Everyone knows yeah. I'm soft for Iron Man. So uh, I love. I love how Moon Knight here, I think you mentioned a little bit of something in the note, just saying it, Fawn is, does a really, really great Moon Knight in your notes. Yeah. I like how the face of Moon Knight, it's not completely white or black. He, yep, he's yep. definitely got just the eyes in the shadow because it kind of makes sense and maybe the, the nose and the mouth kind of jut. Yeah, out and you've got a hood, so, so like the rest of his face is in shadow. It's, it's mm. well done. But it gives him a really a distinct look. Um, yeah. And, yeah, the action is is really cool. Uh, so that that was the thing. I thought reading it, like, forwards, so the story's backwards, the action wasn't as good. But if you read it the way it's meant to be read, like, as in the story in the fluent, correct motion, yeah. you yeah. read it backwards, the action is really good because 
it actually follows the movement of the car. Whereas yeah. uh, if you if you read it backwards, it just it loses that as well. So I think yeah, I think there are, uh, some things were compromised for the sake of just having it told backwards, um, which is a bit of a shame. And um, but like you said, the, these uh, panels here, the use of the sound effects, but look, the use of that what is it the inverse red yeah um, yeah and really so you, you yeah playing with um i just think it was it was a really good way of showing off the uh possibilities of the color palette mm, um, absolutely and i, I think thought it was a pretty good story and it's like you know like look if, if they want to play with telling it backwards absolutely fine yeah. um yeah i find it easier to read the right in backwards but in the right way if that makes yeah. sense yeah yeah um, I think also as well, and I don't want to s start comparing the three stories against yeah. each other, but um, just saying that this one for me, like the integration of, you know, the whole theme of black, white, and red, I think worked really well with this yeah. art. Um, the others did as well, but for me, it stood out. In I this think it's because this, this used the most white. This, this one mm -hmm. didn't use much gray. It's really red, yes. white, black, yeah. red, white, yeah. and the red. Uh, the other ones use more greys in there. Yeah, yeah, true. But I mean, but look at the, the use of red for the the sniper scope, that sort of yeah. stuff. I mean, it's quite, it's it's straightforward, but it's quite clever in the use yeah. of that red. Um, to, to actually it use reminds as an me a bit of the um the Wade and Samney Black Widow run mm, in yeah. the sense that it's a fairly simple story, but being told the art is kind of driving it in a way. Mm -hmm. And uh, and over here again, again, podcast listeners, apologies, we, this is a live stream, but uh, just looking at the panel over there where the sound effect is, is the panel. Is the panel, oh, yeah. The, uh, yeah, that's great with that, the bland. Yeah. Yeah, although, so that... although, although on the Moon Knight panel, he takes yeah. the M, and I would just say that the uh, that's a little bit unfortunate crotch wise position. So. <laughs> I see it. I can't. I can't zoom in, Rebecca. I no, wish I, I could. I know. I know. You'll just all have to take it. If if there's ever yeah. going to be a crotch joke, it will be from me. Yeah. And having his crotch as the middle point of the M is a little bit funny. <laughs> if you have your floppies, uh, <laughs> listeners, go check go check it out. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so, and actually, the the opening shot. Hence the well, i.e. the last it's shot beautiful, yeah. is yeah. really cool as well. I mean, again, the use of the the cape and um, the, the the crescent moon, yeah, uh, to look really like good. an and, angel on the mm. snow, snow angel. <sighs> Anything like with snow and footprints, Rebecca. There's an amazing Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. There's an amazing Spider Man cover. Just, I think it's really always really effective when they do that. So, um, okay, well, that was that was the end. <laughs> yep, that <laughs> um, was the end. Now the beginning. How about now the big? Do you want to let's let's jump into the beginning anyway? Let's just do that. Like well, let let's not go thing. So let's go to how about the Hickman Chris Pacello? Yeah. One. Look, I'm going to say off the bat, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. Um, look, I love Chris Pacello's work. It is good. Sometimes though, it can be really a little bit overwhelming to try and figure out what's going on. Uh, yeah, and and Hickman is the same writing wise. But yeah, I, I mean, but this, you know, like, yeah, yeah, this was confusing. It was, con yeah. I mean, I I love the um, the situation. I love seeing a I love seeing a sci fi Moon Knight story. We yeah, all know, we all love sci fi. We all like Moon Knight in space. We all love yeah. That. And this um, is like well, hundreds of years in the future. Like, uh, but this is the one I think needed more. It needed an yeah. extra. It needed more pages or yeah. more clarity in the art. Um, yeah. And the art's fantastic. It just, it's just hard when you've got to jump in to a situation, and a lot to take in, and you're trying to take in the uh, the characterization and the mm. who the characters are. And then also this, what's the situation? But then, and then the art as well. So it's it's a lot. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, you know, part. It's kind of like you, what you'd expect, I guess, from Hickman in the sense that he's always brimming with ideas, mm -hmm. and he he does seem to be a little constrained in this ten page or whatever how many pages he's given, because it yeah it does seem like a bigger story that really needs fleshing out. Uh, so I think uh, it's interesting enough because it's in space and 
Uh, there are some nice shots here for Michello where he actually There's does some beautiful pair. shots, yeah. Yeah, like he pairs back and like you see the sense of scale here with mm. that that little satellite little compared pyramid to pyramid satellite or yeah, whatever. compared to the the surface of that the planet or, or wherever that it is. Um, this was okay. This is the next page. You start saying like he um he puts on the the, the moonlight gear, but. It just there's just I don't know it's hard to pinpoint one but there's just bits I, where it's yeah. a bit hard to to figure out you know um, and there's a lot of because there has to be a lot of exposition into what they're doing where they're going mm. and I think it's done very well for like how short it is but it's still a little bit like kind of uh, doing a lot of work to tell us what's going on I like the dog the dog is cool the dog's cool I see the use of red is predominantly just the balloon that yeah um, which is funny in a comic called red white and blood that yes um, yeah how little of the red is blood so yes and it's just been reduced to this really kind of arbitrary and the uh, uh scarab, object. the scarlet scarab oh the scarab as well of course yeah but uh, so, i mean this is nice because actually the red it leads it does lead your eye and maybe that is what helps you um track their movement so mm -hmm. as they go to this tomb uh, you see, you know, you can you can follow it, and it was a point of reference for me the the balloon because mm -hmm. at least I can figure out where the little girl is. Uh, and then when they start fighting, a bit hard to follow. Yeah, that I found this was the most yeah. confusing. Like I knew they're off to kill this um, whatever it is. Yes, but look, it's over the, here. Uh, the servant of Anubis or whatever. Anubis, yeah. Um, and that was a bit cluggy. But there, see, there are other creatures here that I didn't even notice before, right? They're, they, they're like yeah. little slug, slugs or something. I think they're um, the scarabs. Oh, they're the, okay, they're the scarabs. They yeah, yeah. The evil, evil scarab. Here we go. Now, it looks beautiful. A lot of detail. It's I cannot gorgeous tell you. art, but like, I couldn't tell you what. Oh, there, I can see. inside it or? Yes, they're in. Yeah, that's right. They look like they were inside, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. And yeah, so... In many ways, like this is, I think this was really. There's a real shot. The shot here of the girl, just all in red uh, and the I, black. I did very did. much like the line as yeah. well. I'm a priestess of Conchu, and he is my knight. Mm. So that brings in. So she that that brings in that relationship, like towards the end. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah, and then it gets progressively. Each of the panels get like progressively more red, and that's blood, not the balloon. So mm. fair. fair enough. Uh, True, but I mean, look, just beautifully drawn. It's just uh, sometimes it is hard to lock the eyes in and, and try to follow what is happening. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a, a very interesting idea. I think it's just it's exploding. It wants to uh, wants to be told. It's something else wants to be told of it. But um, I don't know. We won't get anything else, right? <laughs> I mean, no, that's it. Probably not. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, and again, I like that last bit at the end. Even with the use of the word balloons, yeah, it's kind of that's really cute. shaped that way. Uh, so um, I don't know that if, if there's anything else to say much about this first um, this first one here, Rebecca. No, I mean, no, we've got feedback about them, and I think Terrence yeah, exactly. Just, um, type oh. something in about it. So oh, let's see what Terence has said. This definitely wasn't my favorite, which is a shame because I like the relationship of the Moon Knight character. And the bunny, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? It's kind of it reminded me. I like me, them. Like, but I want to see more of yeah. them, but I don't. I'm not. I don't know if I'd go and buy a comic of them either, based on this. Mm. So I'm kind of like, I, I, yeah, yeah. Oh, I might. I mean, if it was, yeah, if there was a, a few issues of it a as well, chunky it, OGN or something, I might read it. Yeah, but it, it's kind of that kind of that trope, isn't it? Of you know the grizzly warrior yeah, yeah. and the, the the young child that um yeah but which is i always love you know one of my favorite films is lone cup and sons <laughs> is, what, is what lone cup and child it's a trope but yeah you know, oh okay cup, lone wolf and cup yes lone, yeah That's exactly yeah sorry the mandalorian i really and, am tired. Uh, professional that or, yeah. or leon um i love that sort of stuff uh yeah okay well let us move on to the final one which, which is, is the, the middle, middle story. <laughs> yeah, which is the middle story. I'm uh, just going to expand here. So, <clears throat> so white yet so dark. Um, look, we, we kind of let off with art a lot. So I, I think I really enjoyed this. Art. I, I was like surprised the art a lot, just, yeah. The standard, the quality was fantastic. Moon Knight looked fantastic, taking obviously the, the Declan Shelby leanings 
uh, as Noel would say, the bib and croc uh, style, uh, but looks awesome. Uh, a lot more greys in this. So it has uh, he has really cool stirrup straps on his uh, trousers as well, like keeping them onto the shoes, which that was a nice detail. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, oh yeah. You see it in some of the panels further down, further along. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, very yeah, kind of. For example. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next page. Um, but very typical Moon Knight pose, here, hero pose there. I love Spidey. Spidey's looking good. He's got the black and red. Um, I yeah. just kept on thinking, that's for me, that's more like 90s Eric Larson. Uh, yeah, but, but I think within the context of this being black, white, and blood, that, that yeah. going for the yeah. black costume makes sense because y- you can't use any blue. So what do you do? You know, yeah, you go for a exactly. costume that makes sense. Um, so here, I mean, just... It was great to hear that uh, Dotan Akanda did the inking, penciling, and the colouring here because uh, actually it does seem quite, um, you know, uh, quite tight. Um, just I love the the you know the rushing here of of the garbage truck. I think um, yeah. there there wasn't. I mean, and just them swinging is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, and just having them. That dynamic between Moon Knight and Spider Man for me is like always a very awkward one. It's not like Moon Knight and Punisher, which they seem to be a little bit more like minded. Yeah. And there's there's some quipping, but it's not too quippy, I don't think. Oh no, yeah. I didn't I didn't gather that at all. I thought it was um it was done quite well. Uh mm-hmm. it's not yeah, it's not him totally going for laughs and stuff. If anything, Spider Man's the one kind of doing that. Which um, as it should be. As it should be, yeah. yeah. Uh, but great to have, you know, you've got robots in here as well. I, I love that. I always pay attention to the backgrounds as well, and I love the just the cityscape. It just gives it a little, a nice vibe. Is it like um, and the, the Transformer truck? Does the truck transform? The truck transform? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah. I, like <laughs> I thought you would as well. Got to um, rep my Transformers. Yeah. And so, you know, and not only are we talking about, you know, technology and, and robots and stuff. But you got this dude, uh, one of the other accomplices, he goes away on a, like it must be a mutant or something, or oh, he's using the scarab. Uh, he Yeah, he's using um, the scarab and, yeah. To and fly away. He's got a nice shirt on as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, in that it's like, it's quite delicate bits of red. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some really good, yeah, yeah red and the yeah. detailing. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the connections to Jed McKay here. This very much leans into the Warren Ellis, Declan Shelby run. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I liked uh, Moon Knight's glider. That was cool. Yes. Seeing that. So we, yeah. we got Mooney's glider. And he has this, um, he's got this like attache or something that he carries with him, which he eventually gives to Spider-Man. And yeah, I, I thought that that's where he actually packs in his, his glider as well. I'm, I'm not sure if that... Actually, Maybe he keeps all his costumes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but here we go. We're talking about this connection. Uh, this was fun because we got like we got big robots. We got a guy, you know, in a whirlwind just flying through. And now, kind of things go a little bonkers. We get like these ghosts coming yep, up. Yep. And why not? Why not reference the old bone bird bone yep. armor or what is he? They call it the ghost ripper, ghost ripper armor. armor. Yeah. Yeah. Gets a name. So, so cool. And uh, I wonder, it almost looks like he's summoning the suit, right? Um, I mean, he, it, it does appear. F- yeah, it actually does. He's ch- <laughs> yeah, he's chanting something and it yeah, seems like yeah. things are curling around. Because, That's look, cool. that costume would be hell to put on, like, manually, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, then we get these really cool cool shots. And for those that remember, it was very much a green-themed thing in issue three. I think mm-hmm. of the Warren Ellis run, and now obviously using the red um, to to play off the action with the ghosts, uh, pretty cool. And then we get the uh, another kind of kaiju esque, uh, kaiju <laughs> An- Anubis, yeah, uh, which again looks awesome. I love yeah, the the detailing yeah. and just the look of it. So hats off to the the artists there again. Um, Spidey just doing what he can. You know, Spidey's going to be all right. You don't have to really yeah, worry he about him. <laughs> take care of himself uh but uh sorry i've got I've got something in the way there he um yeah he just basically sneaks up on on the guy with the scarab and just kicks him yep um, i am your rude awakening good line good line yes yeah knocks him knocks him for six again rebecca 
English yep. for Stalin. <laughs> <laughs> Punts um, him. Yeah. <laughs> Punts him. Uh, but yeah, uh, and then there's a, like there's a, a bit more humor here, which I thought was pretty cool. I wasn't expecting it, but then again, it's Spidey, so anything yeah, really goes yeah, with Spidey. Spidey. It's nice, yeah. Yeah, and he's got like the little love hearts there, where 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 uh, Mark says, "Okay, you can wear it." And that's so cute, and the little exclamation marks, and the, yeah, it's all very yeah. nice. And he says, "Yeah, I think it's funny." It's like, um, but if it's for some freaky role play stuff, please do <laughs> do us both a favor and don't return it, burn it, and throw it away. The ashes <laughs> on another continent. <laughs> so, um, I mean, he knows. And then you if know? you hug me, I'll slice your face off. So there's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. there's your Bushman reference, everyone. There's your Bushman Houston reference. Yeah. Uh, and then it ends on even a, a like a funnier thing. I think with with Deadpool, um, popping yeah. up, complete with bunny slippers. And um, uh, yeah, and Ferris Bueller dressing gown. Oh yes, and Ferris yeah. Bueller dressing gown. So um, Moon Knight can't escape quippers, it seems. Um, and we'd just like to point out that Spider Man is not wearing a white suit to the Hellfire Gala, so maybe change his mind. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry, I've just minimised my window here, so I see there are a few comments here. Sorry, yeah, guys, oh. we're missing it. Um, so Russell says, "I too want Mister Knight's fancy suit." Yeah, that preferably with no blood on. I like the one from the show. Give me that one and all that. Yeah, that one's super, super fancy. Um, Russell also says, was Mark not invited to the gala or did he just reject it? Well, I think we have an answer to that. Like, can we all remember Age of Conchu? I think Mark's not invited to the gala. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's true. Um, And Mario says, random trivia, the original Ditko costume was red and black. Oh, okay. Um, Yeah, interesting. Well, I mean... In any case, it's not. It works well. It works, yeah. It's not like, oh, what's Spotty doing with a red and black costume? Um, yeah, yeah. We've we've definitely seen it before in in instances. Uh, <laughs> Terence Kajubus, Kajubus. Yeah, Very well done. Name. Yeah, good, love yeah, it. Applause. I think I think that's the name of the show, Rebecca. Put that. Yeah, I think <laughs> that is the name of the show. <laughs> Kajubus, thank you, Terence. You got it. You got it in one. Um, <laughs> Yes, and they'll let Do- yeah, of course they'll let Doom in, but not Mark. I mean, who wouldn't let Doom in? I I wouldn't say no to the guy. So yeah, I mean, like yeah. you know, it's the X Men. They're not, you know. Yeah. Maybe they're only. Inv- I I don't know. I mean, who knows? Maybe he'll be able to go next year. Exactly. Exactly. Don't don't. He might still show Mark. up. He may still yeah. show up. Exactly. Maybe it's cool yeah. not to show up. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So I mean those those are the three stories. They're all very short, sharp, and quick. Yeah. They have their own pros. Uh, they have, you know, their own shortcomings. Uh, you know, as we've discussed. But having said all of that, Rebecca, yeah, what would you give this? Uh, I guess give it the on on the on the whole, like not individual scores. Uh, what would you give the issue one? I if, gave uh, it a seven, which uh-huh. is a solid round boy. Oh. Certainly is a solid round boy. Seven I out of ten. <laughs> I have to say I gave it a six earlier and then I read the other one. I read the end the right way, like backwards. And I was like, no, nah, actually, I did enjoy it. And the art definitely mm-hmm. uh, yep. popped up for me. So Nice. The well, seven out of ten is a pretty decent score. Yeah. Um, uh, Look, I would give it a touch under. I gave it a six and a half, so getting small moon and starting to be a solid round boy. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just thought, I mean, they're fun. Maybe it's just trying to get acquainted with the anthology format again and how short yeah. the, the stories are. So it might be, you know, it's a hard sell, like issue one, to try and get people into it, unless, of course, you've been reading a lot of Black, White and Bloods already. Yeah, um, but to see Mooney, Mooney, as you're saying, to see Moon Knight in this, it's it's a it's a different thing. So trying to trying to ease into it, six and a half. I think it's the art in, you know, I'd the say art, the art the art really sort of elevated it for me. Yeah. So I think story wise, I'd have probably given it a six, and art wise, I gave it seven. I thought overall that meant for me, yeah, it's probably a seven. But you know, I wonder if that will be the case for future issues as well, Rebecca. That for this short format. It's the art that really shines rather than because again, the stories, there's not enough time to really, mm-hmm. you know, spread your wings as a writer, I guess. Um, so maybe, maybe that will be how we kind of see things. Maybe, we'll, yeah. We'll, that's interesting. We'll see so, how it goes. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more of them now. And I think yeah. it'll probably read better 
in the treasury edition like as an actual mm. anthology oh, um right but uh yeah it's interesting a nice tome tome of stories to read <laughs> <laughs> um so thank you uh, we we actually do have i mean sorry we do have a lot of feedback as well i'd love to get through all of it rebecca why don't we kick off with our voicemail i uh, got one from noel the low priest um, and the left velvet drape. Uh, so I am going to try and get this thing working, and we'll we can hear Noel as he. Uh, let me just uh, let me just sort this out, Rebecca. Okay, so this is what Noel had to say. Hey guys, it's Noel Tate. Just calling in to give my review of Moon Knight, Black, White, and Blood. Number one, the anthology series that we are blessed with, maybe. The first story by Hickman and Bachelot was neat, but not much of really anything. The Moon Knight and his bunny hunter partner or whatever, uh, hunting down followers of a dead Ra. It's kind of a neat idea, but it was a really sort of a hard story to follow because of sort of Hickman's brevity in the uh, art, because the black and white and red didn't really work so much. It just kind of made everything sort of confusing to me. Is Kanchu alive, but Ra's dead? I don't really get it. I guess because all suns explode or something. But the visuals and like the illustrations themselves, like just as a piece of art, looked cool, but it didn't make sense in a sort of storytelling way. I don't know what they were fighting. I, I don't know how they defeated it. I'm glad it's a piece of art, but it didn't really do anything for me. The second story is cute. But I think the creators only have kind of a cursory view of Moon Knight. It seems like they just read maybe the Ellis and Shelby run. There's even a direct quote from one of the issues about the uh, angel wing, about whatever mode, flight deck, blah, blah, blah. It's like exactly from one of those um, Ellis comics. And that was fine. Um, and the black, white, and red reads pretty well, especially with like Spider-Man having a lot of red in him and Psy Deadpool <laughs> right from the end of the movie with the Ferris Bueller gag. I guess overall it was kind of cute, but sort of an, another nothing story. But the third one is actually my favorite. Not only does this color scheme work again well with this one, it also reminds me of like the art itself looks kind of like 80s, like Jaime Hernandez meets like David Mazzuchelli or actually even better yet, more like Alex Toth racing comics from like the 60s. It's really stylized. It's classic. I like sort of the trope of the story being sort of told in reverse. And then kind of the reveal of it with the uh, Kierkegaard quote, and then sort of wrapping up the theme in that. And I also dig that um, it's sort of a one-off story from like kind of the current run. It plays off the current run, but it's like a one-off adventure in the current run. It kind of fits in there. Overall, I would give this maybe like a, I don't know, I would say like a six. And it's pretty much because the last story kind of put it above the totally average rating, whatever a six is. I think that's a, big yellow duck <laughs> anyway hope you guys are well talk to you soon bye-bye yeah thank you Noel. um yeah uh, i mean a lot of the points i guess echoed ours rebecca yeah yeah i mean i didn't i didn't worry about the middle one being as cursory as i think Noel did i just thought maybe that was a function of not having many pages but um mm -hmm. i don't disagree with him either it's, it's like it, i just it, it, that wasn't one of my takeaways but uh yeah. it, it's just as likely so yeah I, I think it was illustrated there noel similar to many of us we're just kind of really uh getting settled into this format um you know we, we've never had it so uh you know that things that might seem like just a very simple story. I mean, as we've mentioned, you're not going to get much more with that for, for eight to 10 pages, um, as long as there's a, a strong direction. And if you potentially have a hook, then uh, that might actually stand out. But for the most part, I think Noel said, I mean, the art for the third story, the end, uh, the art seems to be what is catching everyone's eye, uh, funnily enough. Yeah, uh, it's pretty stunning. Yeah, but let's move on to some Facebook uh, messages and feedback here, Rebecca. Um, do you want to do want to kick off? Mario did did start off with a, a very uh, a summarized version at the top, but he came back and uh, kind of fleshed out his ideas. So I've only included his second bit. Okay, yeah. So from Mario, 
Uh, okay, let's take this from the top. The first story had an interesting premise, but the execution was a bit wanting, in my opinion. The art made it nigh impossible to tell what was going on in the fight scene. I'm still not sure how Bunny defeated the Scarab. Agreed. Uh, yes. And the characters came off a bit superficial, a problem I've had with Hickman in the past. He's great at world building, but his cast often feels like parts of a machine. Uh, I'd put this as a two out of five. The second story had cleaner art, although I think the artist cheated by using more than three colours. Uh, and some amusing byplay between Spidey and Mooney. Mark came off a little too Batman in spots, though, and I thought Peter was written too immaturely for the current continuity. The final cameo didn't make things better or worse. So it was a nice throwback to the two th 2014 run, complete with the Ghost Ripper armor. Not the best name, but Ghostbuster is taken. Uh, I enjoyed the dialogue, four out of five. The final story is difficult to review because I'm not sure how I feel about the gimmick. It feels somewhat unnecessary, but without it, the story really isn't all that interesting. Mooney helps a witness get to the courthouse. Bad things happen, but she gets there. The end. Without the reversal, it's a bit pedestrian. It could be from any of any number of series from Punisher to Sin City. With it, it's mildly interesting. Good art anyway. Three out of five. Add everything up. Um, we also get three out of five stars. Solid, but not all that exciting. Seems Ooh. I was very generous with my scoring then. Well, your initial score, Rebecca, it seems my like initial score. Yeah, everyone's, yeah. Everyone's I think I am swayed cool. by the art. So, like, yeah. Mm. Um, well, yeah, for sure. But I, I actually do agree with Mario's point there. Like, it could have been almost any, um, slightly, uh, any. There could be any of a number of uh, heroes. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm going to cough. No, nope. <laughs> it's a scarab. Uh, yeah, it could have been any of a number of them actually doing the witness protection thing. Yeah, true, true. Uh, no, so great, great points there, Mario, um, as always. Uh, yeah, I didn't really get the um, the Dark Knight. I didn't, Moon Knight didn't for me, didn't really come off as a bit Dark Knighty. Uh, and Spidey, look, yeah, true. But hey, he's always a bit of a bit of a quipper so I'll yeah let i'll let that slide i don't anyway. actually know where spider-man is in current continuity so I, i'll take mario's um word for that but i'm yeah. guessing <sighs> the batman by having all the gadgets don't don't try right. and lure me into spider-man <laughs> okay. it's, too, it's yeah. too expensive i'm just saying well i'm just saying um zeb wells just oh, love it <laughs> anyway um next one here from olivia looney olivia and she says uh, a short one here rebecca she says not bad at all feels a, a bit incomplete would have hoped for it to take its time four or five stories 50 pages with different styles i think it would have worked nicely that way again i think she's alluding to the treasury edition i think Rebecca. that's what we'll get for the treasury edition mm. yeah 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 um but totally get where you're coming from olivia and as mentioned it's it's just a different format that we we kind of got to lock into uh these short sharp stories um yeah i mean there's not not for everyone uh, but uh, you, you do get some hidden gems from time to time as well. Uh, Rebecca, if you don't mind, I'll take Russell's because you I'm know, just you had to clarify. Um, Mario yes. just said that he the comparison with Batman was the wordless grunt. Ah, oh, okay, <laughs> fair enough. Yes, um, oh, <laughs> or the or the, the more wordles grunting. Uh, so I, I grunt too, Mario, when I do wordle. Um, <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> um, um so anyway, I'll, I'll just quickly go on to Russell's as well, yeah. only only because, Rebecca, there's a short one and there's another long one for, for you okay. after that. Uh, so Russell um, writes in and says, a book was a bit all over the place, but that's a given with different creative teams. Story one, I love Hickman's words. He has such a gift for setting tone, mood, but the art was a kind of a mess. I couldn't tell what was happening most of the time. I do want more of this Moon Knight's world, but would prefer a different artist. Story two. The best of the bunch, a fun team up with the war crawler. Art was easy to swallow, and the back and forth between Mooney and Spidey was excellent. I can't help but think Scarabs being in two back-to-back -back stories is a little forced given their place in the MCU show, but I'd say these stories were written before the show began. Uh, loved the reveal of Spidey wanting the Mr. Knight suit for the gala, and the gag ending with Wade was fun, and bone armor, baby. And uh, story three, an interesting idea, but utterly confusing, which I suppose is kind of the intent. Red Blade was cool. Art, again, not the best, but for the most part, enjoyable. Overall, a mixed bag. I enjoy, enjoyed all the stories, but the art in one and three was a bit off for me. Moon rating six. Wow. I absolutely loved the art in the third one. So Yeah. Uh, oh, but, you know, different taste. taste. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
But but six again, Rebecca. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, Look, I think I mean it's uh it's interesting. Like people do have different favorites, which is it's kind of nice because it means that they're yeah. they're resonating differently. And, and I do think, um, again, Olivia's point, I think once this is collected, like with a whole bunch of them, I think people will enjoy it more. It's just because it's like yeah. in, in a, a three ninety nine comic book and you've just got three stories and they're so quick, you're probably going to go, oh, God, that went fast. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, James Dry. Uh, I thought it was funny but random as hell. I enjoyed the second part more, though. I'm curious to see where this goes. Excellent. Yep. Another thumbs up for yep, yep. Uh, Morewa Ayadela and uh, Dota Nakanda. So well done there. Uh, and now Douglas Vincent. Do Douglas Jonathan Vincent. Uh, I decided since there wasn't really anything about DID in any of these stories, oh, I'd give Lena a, a little mm. break. So this is Douglas. Uh, story one. I love stories about the future and I thought this had some interesting concepts, but the art made the story more difficult to understand. I sometimes like Pachala's style. It can make for some awesome imagery, but can also tend to devolve into an indecipherable mess at times. And this story had both of those extremes. <laughs> Six point five out of ten. Very well put, I think. Yes. Uh, yeah. Story ten. This was definitely story two. Ooh. Story ten. I'm just <laughs> picking up the head, Rebecca. Yeah. Don't worry, Loonies. Uh, we haven't got story two. Copies. Story ten will be everyone's <laughs> favorite. Like Gary. <laughs> yeah. uh, story two. This one was definitely my favorite. Spider Man is actually my favorite character. Sorry, Mooney. I haven't known you since my childhood. <gasps> I thought it was an awesome bonus to see not only the black and white Shalvi army, but Shalvi armor. <laughs> Shalvi army, that's terrifying. Shalvi armor, Shalvi army. Uh, but, Shalvi also... army. <laughs> <laughs> but also the ghost stripper armor. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but was that Ferris Bueller's robe that Deadpool was wearing at the end of the story? Awesome yeah. reference to the reference from the first Deadpool movie, nine out of ten. Uh, story three. Once I figured out the story was actually being told backwards, I was tempted to skip to the end and read it backwards. But I read it forward first just to get the full experience. I agree with others that have said it was an interesting gimmick, but without the gimmick, it's a so-so story. But I enjoyed the art, especially the design of the villains. Seven out of ten. Yeah, good point. I think Red Blade was pretty well designed. Yeah, um, except, except I thought it was Iron Man. Which... <laughs> but that's, <laughs> oh, that was my own paranoia. So Yeah. Um, so pretty um, high scores there, 9 out of 10 for story two. I've just got to shout that out. That's pretty cool. Um, so, no, thank you, Doug. Thank you for those. Uh, and, it's, and it's great. Yeah, great to hear another perspective as well. So uh, That's cool. Uh, we got one from John Marsden, Looney John. Absolutely incredible book. First story was a bit busy, but I still liked it. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Mr. Knight saying welcome to the Midnight Mission. My name is Mr. Knight. How can I help? That makes me giddy like a kid who found an extra chicken nugget in his four-piece Happy Meal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. Uh, and uh, Ryan Stegman, art, next issue, take my damn money or done or damn. Dan, damn or done. Yes, John. Uh, yeah, uh, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I just I had to giggle at your comments and also just the first story. A bit busy. Um, <laughs> you know. A bit busy, uh, but true. Uh, but no, thank you, John. Uh, always good to hear from you. And um, Ruby, we've got one more from Facebook. Yep, uh, from Zach Sarandria. Uh, the first story was fine overall, but the art and colouring format clashed too much and was far too messy at times, making it hard to make up what's going on. Make out what's going on. Uh, the writing didn't help explain much either, to be honest. <laughs> I find it did far better from these two. I'm quite disappointed. The second story was far superior to the first, in my opinion, every way. The art and writing was fantastic, and all the callbacks to the Ellis Shelby run were amazing. The banter between Spidey and Mooney and the humour, love it. The third story was also fantastic and my favourite. The uh, third story to me is everything Mooney's and all about. It's a nice spin-off to the regular ongoing. Um, I feel the art in this story was the best for the colour format, and the writing was great as well. All in all, I feel it was a solid 8 out of 10. Ooh. I just had to take away points from the first story as I found it so disappointing. Oh, no, thank you, Zach. Um, we've got a big one there. 8 out of 10. Yeah, well done. Nice. Uh, but, yes, uh, again, I think we can all relate, uh, Rebecca and I, to to those points that you've just uh, mentioned. Uh, yeah, there seems to be a lot of, I guess, a lot of common threads mm -hmm. uh, to how we've received this. But, no, thank you so much, Zach, and thank you, everyone from the Facebook group for, for throwing in your two cents as well. Yeah, now, just to, you. yes, absolutely. Uh, just to cap thing before we 
uh, what am I even saying? <laughs> Let's go to Instagram. Um, uh, a short, sharp one from Victor, uh, gone calves 10. And uh, Victor says it was pretty good. The last one makes me so freaking confused. <laughs> First so, one made, so, made us everyone else confused. I'm sorry, <laughs> there's Victor. a lot of confusion with this issue. <laughs> All I can say, Victor, is I, I hope you, I hope you realised that it was back to front as well, and and hope you had read it backwards and, and yeah. made a bit more sense. Um, otherwise, yeah, there was a lot of confused people. I must say. Um, sorry, I just got a little bit of the giggles there. Just oh, it is, it is a funny. It is a funny black white and blood it, it's it shouldn't be funny because it's like red you know blood and anyway um... <laughs> <laughs> we've lost it <laughs> oh my gosh yeah we're almost home as well um okay finally though rebecca uh, we did I, I mentioned to this to your fair we did get an email which i forgot to to air in the many shows that we covered for the tv show so i want to give props to to kyla dharma um, hello, Kyla. I hope you're still listening. Yep. And, uh, and Kyla says, Kyla, oh, do you want to read it, Rebecca? Yeah. Uh, uh, hello, all. Uh, I just started listening to your podcast when the Moon Knight show started. I've only watched the show, so I don't know the comic background for the character. In your last episode, I heard Rebecca express some trepidation that the scales balanced after Stephen was left behind. Uh, I wonder if the balancing wasn't associated with Stephen being left behind but with Stephen's actions. In that scene, he takes on a lot more agency and starts fighting for Mark. The early episodes, he fights with Mark to get control or to stop the violence. But if he ever if it ever gets dicey, he lets Mark handle it. Mark spends a lot of time protecting Stephen, and this is the first time it's reciprocated. The scales balance because Stephen made some sort of peace with his relationship and feelings towards Mark. Obviously, I'm not sure if that's the case, but it's a much nicer idea than one identity needing to be removed. Uh-huh. I'm loving your show and the Marvel show, and though episode five made me want to cry. Thanks, Kyla. Made us want to cry too. I all mm. cry. Um, but no, thank you very much. And that is a lovely, and that's not one I think we covered on mm. why it might have been. Because we did we did cover the uh maybe it's because they they've like um there is some sort of resolution between them and but but I think the way that Kyla phrased that is a very nice way of phrasing it is that like um, not only does Stephen have some more agency, but it's the first time he's gone to protect Mark. Yes, and that's yeah. the balancing. So that's quite nice. Oh, sorry, yeah. I missed a little bit at the bottom. P.S. I'm from Canada, not Chicago, but in my experience, taxis in North America are more often than not yellow. There's a yellow mm-hmm. cab company, but also just unaffiliated yellow taxis. So that's a clarification for those of us not from America. Yes, th- awesome. thank you, Carla. <laughs> thank you. We were probably <laughs> we were probably just you know waxing lyrical about. No, I remember we were talking cabs. about yellow cabs and like okay. the yellow cab yep. being behind him, and was that a nice little nod oh. to Jake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, yes. Um, no, no, thank you, Carla, so much. Uh, yeah, and that I loved your um interpretation of that because it, it did generate a lot. Yeah, a lot of discussion. Uh, we got some uh, comments as well from you know the likes of. Uh, some people with DID system like Lena as well. So um, I, I was optimistic the way that they kind of handle it by uh, episode six. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, let, let us, Carla, let us know what you thought of the the whole series. I'd, I'd love to hear, I'd uh, love to hear from you uh, for that. But so a huge thank you uh, for sending that in and go Canada. Um, <laughs> anyway, go Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, <laughs> about wraps us, Rebecca. <laughs> yeah. Before the wheels totally come off. Uh, what I just wanted to say, spectacle wise, uh, now I posted it up um, erroneously before assembled the making of Moon Knight. Uh, I did say it was May 11th. It has been delayed, and I believe it's the 25th of May now that it is being aired. So please keep your eyes out for that. I'm hoping to do like watch parties, Rebecca. I thought maybe that would be fun. Yeah, I, I put... yeah. I saw, I saw the one you suggested. <laughs> <laughs> I put oh. something. I put you something, put something like this time, and it's like everyone else is like that. It's like three AM in America. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> uh, but maybe we have two. Maybe we have a UK yeah, yeah, and yeah. A, and a US one. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a shame to because we're all over the place. You know, we're, we are. We're spread out. So in more yeah, ways than one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it'd be hard to to get everyone in the same room. But, um, yeah, maybe that's something, Loonies, if you're interested, 
go check out our discord as well i've thrown up an, an event there i might throw up a one for i might throw up <laughs> uh, a us one as well <laughs> uh but yes go check it out there'll be a lot of fun in a couple of weeks time uh next phase we will be uh, episode 286 it is uh we're going back to it's been ages since we've done the moon phase it's a waning gibbous so it will be a moon walk uh and that is basically moon night when he's not in his run hence the moon walk oh, nice. um yeah uh, so i've thrown up uh, again i've thrown up again uh, a poll in, <laughs> in the patreon page uh for a few issues that you know M moon Knight appears in uh so there's a great lakes avengers issue there's a, a jla avengers crossover the the perez one um and there is also the Age of Ultron, and I think there's Avengers Forever are the options. And I've, I've placed it to the Petrunis to see nice. uh, what, what they want. Uh, and, yeah, so we'll cover one of those for next episode. Uh, Loonies, it has been a, an immense pleasure again. Um, Rebecca has, has been amazing again to chat with you. It's good to just be able to talk it is. a it's lot just, of... It's, it's weird because it's such a... We're just not used to this kind of anthology thing, but, and it's kind of thrown us... And like I think we always we thought that we'd have the Jed run and then this one and now getting this one first after the show is a little bit because we've yes. already just dealt yeah. with a different interpretation in the show and now we're getting all these other ones but it's fun and I think we're going to get really into it as we get sort of more issues. Mm, yeah, looking forward to it as well. And again, we've got Moon Knight appearing in other other titles, so a lot we'll of be other titles that. coming up. Yeah. Oh my gosh! So we've got a lot to cover. Um, yeah. But with that, Loonies again. Oh, I should I should say all the the outro stuff. A big thank you to uh, all the Petrunis, of course. A big thank you to Odin, Daniel, Drew, Frank, Justin, Derek, Kyle, Wayne, Jordan, Josh, James, Anthony, Russell, Michael, Mario, Gavin, and Matthew. Thank you so much. Please check out patreoncom slash Knight if you want us to to be better. <laughs> what we're doing um finally a big thanks to our sponsors uh again frank the think tank on instagram that's moon knight visions with a z uh got fringe night daniel doings fringe night patreon.com slash fringe night 27 and drew tombs music on soundcloud soundcloud.com slash tombs with a z and lurk music with a ck.bankam.com and finally clz comics at collectors.com and dreamland comics if you use the code moon you'll get 20 percent off all this stuff finally we are on um uh, part of the collective as well so we've got plenty of other shows there that do this sort of stuff but probably better um go check it all out <laughs> go check it out uh, capes and lunatics for sure uh and the likes of uh, earth's mightiest podcast the emp the guys over there finally uh you can find us uh, drop us a line feedback at itkmoonot.com we've got a website itkmoonot.com and we're on facebook Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Discord, Get Vocal, and Podchaser. And a review would be very cool if you could. Um, we'd love you for it. So thank you. <laughs> um, review us now. What are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah. Such a professional uh, podcast. Go say how professional it was. Exactly, exactly. You cannot, you know, <laughs> we, we are striving to be up there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Rebecca, a huge thank you. Thank uh, you. And as always, everyone may country watch over the denizens of the night. Catch you later. Bye. Moon Knight and affiliated characters, stories and events are properties of Marvel Characters Incorporated. Materials used and discussed within the podcast are intended for critique and review purposes only under the fair dealing concept of the current Copyright Act. The views, information or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the copyright owners.